Please give it up for Bill Conway. Oh, hi. All right. So I'm 34 years old now, and I can feel the testosterone just fleeing my body at a rapid pace. And because of this, when I see like an attractive woman walking down the street with her dog, it's more likely that I'm checking out the dog than I'm actually checking out the woman. And I find myself being an asshole and actually catcalling the dog. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, yo, you a good boy? <laughs> yeah, you look like a good boy. <laughs> you some sort of corgi German shepherd mix? <laughs> yeah. I see you wagging that tail. <laughs> mm. Nobody ever lets me pet their dog. <laughs> mm. Sucks. Not afraid of a lot of things, but I am afraid of artificial intelligence. Anybody else? AI? Yeah. They predict, like experts predict in 20 years, artificial intelligence will be able to write novels. They'll be in creative pursuits. So as a stand-up comedian, I'm worried about that because that means like AI will be able to perform stand-up and it will put me out of a job. If I'm being honest, it will put me out of a hobby, but... Like, artificial intelligence will be able to download every set from every recording ever, process it through an algorithm, be able to process the laughs, and figure out what Americans want, and it's going to be the hackiest material ever. It's going to be ventriloquism, <laughs> lots of prop comedy, impressions, oh yeah. <laughs> like, I can see it, the first robot that sells out Radio City Music Hall, he's up on stage, and he's like, oh yeah, my daddy was a first-generation robot. He talked like this, you know. <laughs> Happy birthday, Polly. Yeah. Rocky Four. He's the robot from Rocky Four. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's up there and he's like, Yeah, my mother, she was a first generation sex robot. She talked like this. Please kill me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to go. But I think artificial intelligence will help with uh, like health and stuff like that. Like it will cure a lot of diseases. I worked with a guy who had pancreatic cancer and he came to work every single day while he was battling that. And for me, that was awful because that meant for six months I could not call in sick to work once. <laughs> uh, nothing that was wrong with me was worse than what, worse than what he was going through. Like, yeah, boss, I can't come in right now. I got the sniffles. And he's like, well, Jack's here. And he just went through four sessions of chemo. And you're like, yeah, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Yeah. But he would tell me, he's like, you know, Bill, when I die and I get to heaven, I'm going to play guitar with Jimi Hendrix, man. It's like, you know, to me, that sounds like Jimi Hendrix's idea of hell. Yeah. Like, really, every white guy that dies gets to play a lick with Hendrix? That doesn't seem fair. My version of hell is a lot different, though. Here's my version of hell. This is what it is. Picture a sold-out movie theater, and I have to save two seats for friends that never show up. That... <laughs> that is my version of hell. It's like, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, I know these seats are taken. That's why my jacket is over these two things right here. Oh. Then I look up on the screen. It's not trailers or anything. It's old MySpace messages I sent to girls in 2006. You know? <laughs> like, oh... I can hear everybody talking about him. I'm like, did he send that girl an original poem? Like, oh, I thought she was in... Yeah. How, how many girls did he invite over to watch Amelie? I'm like, oh. It was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. But I'm married now, so I don't have to deal with messaging girls online, so that's good. Actually, I have my one-year wedding anniversary coming up this weekend. Thank you. Yeah. When uh, we first got married, my wife and I got a joint checking account, and I know all the fellas are here like, Bill, joint checking account? What about all your comedy money? Cool it, fellas. It's fine. <laughs> but she came home with a bunch of candles and picture frames and shit for decorating the house, and I was like, listen, you never have to buy that, ever. I have a tip. Here's how you can get free candles and picture frames for life. Here's what you want to do. You drive to a dangerous stretch of highway, okay? <laughs> If it has a nickname like The Devil's Elbow or Dead Man's Curve, perfect. Look for a crucifix on the side of the road. <laughs> then you want to get out of the car. Be careful. It's a dangerous stretch of highway. <laughs> You're on the Widowmaker right now. You've got to be careful. 
you get out of your car and you help yourself to all the free candles and picture frames you want, nobody's coming back for them. <laughs> the candles are lightly used, one vigil tops. Picture frames, all you gotta do is throw out the picture in an irresponsible looking teenager, boom. Perfectly good picture frame right there. Yeah. And if anybody's got like a niece's birthday coming up, I got a bunch of soggy stuffed animals in the back of my car right now, so see me after the show. I've been Bill Conway, thank you. <laughs> 